Ah. Oh, look at that lamp. Mm -hmm. Why are we still building, burning kerosene? <laughs> we put a little Mako in there? What, what, what's up? I don't know. So on top of the side quest stuff happening in Sector 7, they went through the time and effort to have all the NPCs say completely brand new things again. Uh-huh. Well, yeah, they got to talk about Fort Condor, apparently. <laughs> yep. We'd have the Undercity sparkling like the plate in no time. Hey, do you remember the last time we went out for drinks, how we were swapping war stories and stuff? Not this again. We get it. He killed a bunch of Wu-Tians. Damn straight I did, but that's not it. You remember how that Jija guy got all up in my face? Yeah, probably because he was sick of all your goddamn bragging. Yeah, there's a lot of people who are just like, Mmm, Fort Condor, love it. Condor's finally made it down to the undersea. But he was real angry. Though I suppose it could have been the booze. Well, we don't know his story, do we? Maybe the war did a real number on him. Like he could have lost his family or, or whatever. Ah, uh, don't say that. Now I feel like an asshole. Yeah, sh you yeah. should. Mm. Fuck it should. So, Nio is bringing up the happy turtle guy. <laughs> He looks real happy. Wow, thanks. We don't need your kind around here. <laughs> oh, the joy and cheer that away at the happy turtle. Ho oh, ho, greetings, Softshell. So, how many of those flyers did you find? What? Ahem. Collect just six flyers for the happy turtle, and a one-of-a-kind prize could be yours. Ring any bells? Nope. Well then, allow me to explain. The Happy Turtle's running a contest. And the rules are simple. All you have to do is collect six of our fabulous flyers from around Sector 7, and you'll earn yourself a prize sure to delight even the dourest Diamondback. Ha <laughs> ha! Sadly, a handful of locals have taken to acting like stink pots toward anything Mutayan, especially since the bombings. Some have even gone so far as to tear down my poor posters. Little wonder nobody's won yet. Bummer. <sighs> Which leaves me in a pretty predicament. But hey, my pain might be your game. By collecting just a handful of flyers, you could be the first, and at this rate, the only winner of the most testudinarious contest in Midgar's history. This here is a sample of one of our ads. Breathtaking, isn't it? Now it's up to you to find all six. Leave no shell unturned, no pond unplumbed. That prize is as good as mine. Ah, since you're here, you wouldn't happen to have any condor coins on you, would you? This job may keep a shell over my head, but my real passion's coin collecting. I'd gladly part with some oddities and commodities in exchange for those little buttes. I collect as much as possible of this one coin. Unless every every copy of Fort Condor comes with a unique coin or something, I don't know. But yeah, this guy is basically just Yuffie's Moggy. You give him uh -huh. Condor yeah. coins, you win from Fort Condor matches, and you can buy items and, and new Fort Condor units and, and game pieces. He also gives you a, a list of hints for uh, where to find these flyers. This is referencing a very obscure side quest the game never tells you about in the original game, where if you examine certain uh -huh. certain random parts of areas throughout the entire game, including areas that are missable, such as the Shinra building, and you find all the flyers, you get some items. And it's like Ooh. not even anything that crazy. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> some stat boosting items. Neat. It's pretty cool that they, they brought back such an obscure thing and made it like into this whole guy and everything. <laughs> there, there's something nifty about like, okay, we're going to introduce this uh, uh, very like Japanese inspired part of our setting. And what do they do? Uh, vinyl toy collecting, apparently. Uh, yeah. That's their thing. So right next, there is one of these little music players right by the Happy Turtle guy, Old Snapper, playing the Happy Turtle theme. Anytime you come near one of the flyers, the Happy Turtle theme is playing, but in a completely different music genre. Every single <laughs> every single collectible has its own full song written just for it. It's ridiculous. 
Wow, that's a very happy turtle, though. This is a raver turtle. Never stood a chance, little guy. Damn. The happy turtle's got some marketing budget behind it. It's, <laughs> it's commissioning artists. It's got songwriters for it. Like, mm -hmm. damn. Yeah, the happy turtle collectibles are pretty fun to get just because they're they all just got a little you got to do something goofy to get most of them the happy turtle is the soul of of the slums absolutely <laughs> finally somewhere fun to go that isn't in walmart <laughs> yeah this song that this version of the happy turtle theme has air horns in it at one point <laughs> there we go I like that the kids fighting with the rusty pipes back in the playground are fighting over who gets to be Cloud. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's cute. You're not gonna believe this, but you know that new tenant who just moved in? Who tie-in? What? Like some kind of spy or something? Dunno, but I might report them to the watch. The interesting thought isn't that people are saying completely different things, it's that the character you're playing is picking up on different what? snatches of conversation. Right? Yep. Like, <laughs> yeah. Look, a flying turtle! I want a balloon like that. There's got to be some way we can reach that thing. Wow, turtles well, one alive. of us owns a boomerang. Hmm. Uh, oh. Hello, cat. Hey. One of Wedge's 300 cats. Turtle? Hey kids, fuck your balloon. <laughs> the gumshoe ninja strikes again. Hey, lady, why did you do that? <laughs> I liked having first, that balloon by my house. I was planning on making that Merc sword. So is the happy turtle like a pet shop for turtles? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, I like this post, this flyer, because this turtle is fucking wasted. <laughs> He's flush and everything. Uh, should mention that uh, the happy turtle in the original game was called Turtle's Paradise. Hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There, hey, big guy. There. Don't worry. They'll be back soon. I oh. promise. <gasps> Paul said they aren't here, but we gotta be brave. Oh, you're purring like a motor, aren't you, little buddy? What's going on? Not right now. I'm in the middle of something important. <laughs> I'm comforting my cat. Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> my cat's emotional needs are important to me. <laughs> Got another Fort Condor unit here. So now Ooh. all the units that you can... Uh, drop are actual soldiers. Some of them are facilities that crank out soldiers for you. Ah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I really like this mini game. I Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's a lot of fun. So many cats. I think this is the most cats that I've ever been at Wedges so far. Do the cats just really like the song? Maybe. We should make our own. Or can they tell oh, that, that Wedge is upset? Oh, and he needs no, a that's, friend. no, yeah, that's totally what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Cloud and Tifa are both gone. Oh. Who knew spreading rumors about Wu Tai could be so lucrative? We're gonna be rich. You're gonna be dead. Racists. After all this, no way Avalanche is gonna pack it up. Know what I say? We start salvaging while everyone else is in shock. Who's signing your checks? I'm gonna kill them next. Maybe we should move back to the country. I'm always hesitant when, like, games that have fantasy settings or even, like, sci-fi settings try to do anything, even if it's something small with, like, fantasy racism, because a lot can go bad there. <laughs> um, but here I think it's fine just because it's, like, yeah, like, like especially with a war happening, regardless of what nation it is or what, they're going to hate the other side or whatever, and, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yuffie's gonna pick up that. Guess who it is? Yes! So when your opponent leads with this, you respond with this? Oh, this game is insane. Hey there, suit. How's that conversation with yourself working out? Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to disturb anyone. 
My daughter's been dying to play this game, and I promised to teach her. But first, I have to teach myself. That game wouldn't happen to be Fort Condor, would it? If you want, I'll help you figure stuff out. You, you will? Oh, thanks. That'd be a great help. Yes. yes. Rank one. <laughs> Rank one. So now that we're out of the the tutorial match, mm -hmm. so we picked up a different game board, uh, yeah. and you can you can switch switch between those. Different ones are good for different matches. Now we can just kind of choose like what units we go into. You get to see what the opponent has, so you can you know plan against those. So they're at a real disadvantage. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Shinra Middle Manager has the Assassin Board. Um, mm. The stats of every game board is uh, the maximum amount of ATB segments you can have, how much you start with right at the beginning of the match, what magic materia it comes with, and its speed. You can have one, two, or three for speed. So he's just kind of at an advantage because he can just crank out units faster than I can. Right, right. Different game boards also let you bring in a different amount of uh, units. You can have a maximum of eight with some of the boards. And another thing with the board is the, the headquarters and outposts, the, the birds you gotta defend. With different boards, they have different amounts of health and different amounts of attack power. Yeah, yeah, you, he, he's just got a better board than you with yeah, all he's, of his, his management money. Yeah, he's straight up just better. So I've got the, the little Hella Trooper here. Some units are flying units, um, and certain units are completely incapable of attacking flying units. Like when you're <laughs> selecting your units in the lower right of their little like stat card, it has three icons, one for like ground units, one for stationary units, and one for flying. And some, uh -huh, like if flying uh -huh. is just grayed out, they can't attack. And like if an, a unit sees a flying unit and it can't attack that, it just walks right by it. It doesn't even try to fight. <laughs> I'll get you next time. Yeah. But like <sighs> what Shinra ma middle manager just dropped, uh, he dropped one of those little sentry rays. So there are, there are also uh, stationary units that uh, are like turrets and missile launchers and stuff like that. My strategy for beating him here is uh, to use the uh, Shinra guard dog unit. They are incredibly, they have very little health, they have really high attack power, they're the fastest unit in the game, and they have the unique behavior of they won't fight anything except the birds. So they just, <laughs> they just beeline straight to the birds to bite them. So you're, you're just rushing them with dogs. Yeah. Yeah, it's a dog rush. Yep. And if you can have a different unit approach one of the birds first so that they draw its aggro and have the dog come in second, it can bite them for way longer because nothing's attacking it for a little bit. Right, right, right. Yeah. This DLC, especially this part, is really just the greatest hits of all the best NPCs. Yeah. Well, what do you know? I think I'm starting to get the hang of this. Starting to get the hang of what? Losing? Losing on purpose, to be precise. If I can let my daughter win without her suspecting, that to me is as good as a victory. Boo! <laughs> I know, I know. But if it'll make her happy... <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know if he and or his family survives when the plate crashes later. I gotta know. I also lost that argument with Barrett on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> to make him feel good! So yeah, we I gotta... could tell he was having a rough day, that very large scary man. <laughs> So for beating him, we also got the elite uh, grenadier uh, unit, which there are just elite versions of all the basic soldiers, which cost double the amount of ATB bars to drop, but they're like twice as strong, basically. Right, right, right. By the way, what if you tried to go to Seventh Heaven? Weird. The whispers. Because <laughs> you can't meet the party early. Yep. These ways are a mystery. And she's not met anybody who can see the whispers, so she can't see shit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What is this? I love it. Hey, you're not important enough for the ghost to care. What's <laughs> up? Enough already, Shinra. We get it. I should be up there with them. Not that I'd be much use, but still. Where are they? 
They should have been here by now. Hmm? Waiting for someone? Ooh, you got stood up. As if. Wait, who are you? <laughs> Don't mean to be rude or anything, kid. But do you mind? I'm not exactly in the mood. You ever try to cuddle a guy on a motorcycle? It's not <laughs> easy. <laughs> not that I'm surprised after what went down yesterday. This is heavier than You're gonna want to hear this. So get this. The Don Corneo. So like these ladies will be talking about Don Corneo and the the, the scouts he sends out into the slums and all of that. Mm -hmm. Guy with knife that I love will yeah. start talking, but because they're talking, his VO doesn't engage or is really quiet. So it just looks like there's a guy with a huge knife just mouthing words silently to himself, which makes it even creepier. Usually if he does talk and is just mouthing words, he tells you that this isn't a place where Yuffie should be. And that just makes me think he's defending the pizza place behind him. <laughs> None of them cosplay types are allowed to have pizza here. <laughs> That's quite the outfit, but wait till you see my stock. So sometimes when you talk to this guy, he's like, ah, my stock is always changing. He literally means that every X amount of minutes or whatever, his stock actually does change. And you need to check in with this guy multiple times because he sells a couple different Fort Condor units you can't get anywhere else. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like the, the big moth unit. Hell yes! Hella rare. Four stars. He also has like end game equipment and materia on him sometimes, like the HP absorb stuff. You could... Wow. Wow. You weren't that good in the regular game, but now. <laughs> yeah. There you are! Get back here, you little turtle thief! He finally got his good <gasps> shipment when uh, Cloud was busy bombing places. <laughs> Hey, buddy. Nope. Got the wrong cat. I'm a big fan of this cat that's got a bag of, of stamp chips on him. Yeah. Yeah. Do, doing the little leg kick thing. That's great. This cat loves stamps. Ugh. <laughs> uh. Why do you all have to look I, the same? I love this issue of Business Magazine with President Shinra on the cover. Well, what other businessmen are they going to put on it? <laughs> right? Don Corneo? Just, no, ju thank you. Just Rufus Shinra is the only other guy who can be there, I think. <laughs> Andrea Rodea on Business Magazine. <laughs> yeah. They'd sell every issue. Mm hmm Again, cats seemingly love stamp because these cats are fighting over a stamped magazine. <laughs> They love Stamp, yet they hate Cloud. I don't understand. I, I don't know. They're the same guy. Yeah. You, the cat's like asking for permission to touch that meat skewer, but like, you got it. It's yours. <laughs> I don't want your kebab. I just want your advertisements. <laughs> Do you think all these magazines these cats have is because Wedge is trying to teach his cats to read? <laughs> <laughs> he just wants them to talk back. Maybe reading is the first step to that. It won't be so lonely if they can keep up with current events. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. My cat writes op-eds for the Shinra, the, the Shinra star. <laughs> Flyer acquired. My cat never apologized for thinking the Iraq War was a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Look at these turtles having a date. Oh, what <laughs> lovely. That turtle, the bartender turtle in the back has a mustache also. That's really I good. I would go to this place. Yeah. I would go to the Happy Turtle. If it's at all as advertised. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a big if, to be fair. Mm hmm. That's 100% of the live theater in this place. No! Something I can point out now is 
In the first couple of episodes of this Let's Play of the, the Bane game, I was in this same area and people were talking about the Loveless mu musical. Uh, and the game does a little wink wink nudge nudge with that NPC conversation because they go like, Ooh, it's like a it's like a new version of the Loveless musical we've seen before, but I hear the ending's different this time. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they actually only play Act 1, <laughs> but they added a lot of other stuff to, to the story. Yeah, there's like a side musical that's like shorter, but you got you might want to see that. They completely recast everybody, but they do a great job. Yeah. You there, young lady. Hey, no, no, do not trust. <laughs> no trust. <laughs> She's going to steal all your, your pieces. You know the drill. You want to play? You got to fork over. Hmm? What's your deal? And why are you dressed like a five-year-old? That's just weird. Uh, what are you talking about? This isn't weird. It's super cute. Super cute? <laughs> More like super lame. Not as lame as Midgar. Huh? Just saying how much I was looking forward to playing Fort Condor. I could really use the training, you know? Sure, I'll put you through your paces. But you do know it's gonna cost you, right? One match, three gil. Pay up. So the different units here also, like if you, you look at their little stat cards, they have uh, different amounts of health, they have different amounts of t attack power. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they're also, you know, ground stationary flying. Uh, I'm going to get the riot barracks just to start spawning shield dudes. Mm -hmm. So they're like, you can get the, there are better rare units you can find like the, the, uh, moth unit the, that I got from the shop earlier. And like, they're really good, but for the first couple of beginning matches, they're kind of traps to use because they take so much gauge. Right, right. And you're already at a gauge disadvantage. Yeah. In, in this. So that's like, especially with the beginning matches, why the, the guard dogs are so useful because they, mm -hmm. <laughs> they really help you tip the scales. Also, I should point out there's that white line right there. Uh, that line is the limits of where you can s drop units. And the further into your opponent's field your units go, the further that line goes. Right. So if you get units right up on the Condor, you can just start spawning soldiers right next to it. But like the same goes for uh, the opponent as well, where they can just start spawning guys right next to you. The little unit spawning facilities, the barracks, they, every time they spawn a unit, it loses a little bit of health. Right. So yeah. I think it, it spawns a maximum of like four or five guys, but you really want to make sure that these are spawned in a place where other enemies aren't going to attack it, because if they drain its health, that means it's less, it's less it's soldiers less it can spit out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It makes less guys. You want to make the most guys. Uh, you need so many guys. That barracks only made one guy. Mm-hmm. There's that guard dog. Start biting. Uh, the same thing goes for the... There are stationary units like turrets and, and stuff that you can drop. Those, mm -hmm. because they have a really long range and they can attack from very far away, even if nothing is attacking them, their health just drains over time. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. It's not very nice. No. But okay. <laughs> My goodness. It's also really funny to see uh, the, the Fort Condor minigame uses, like, the same music track that the minigame the original game had, but it's funny to see even that get, like, the remake treatment of it having, like, two or three different phases yeah, <laughs> based yeah, on, yeah. On, on what's happening in the match. I don't even hear it's a big bird. Damn, look at that. <laughs> so, yeah, there's... There's a whole bunch of other opponents that will be challenging later on after we do some main story because you gotta you gotta rank up before you can even challenge them. Right. Um, excuse me. I cheated and I still lost. <laughs> well, 
what can I say? Talent trumps all. <laughs> Whatever. You still owe me for my time. It's gotta be worth seven gil at least. As if. Also, like, the, the map puts a little check mark on the opponents you've already beaten, but you can still play them and, like, grind Condor coins from, from the matches. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is I'm in this game. That's yeah. nice. That's, that's the that's the third separate painter that sings stamp songs in Sector Seven now. <laughs> okay, everyone, listen up. Time for Stamp, the, the loyal to little helper. Bow wow! I'm Stamp, too? the good boy who never stops helping. Captain's given me a very important mission to buy bread for tonight's dinner. So with his super duper nose, Stamp went into town to sniff out a bakery. He went a sniff sniff here and a sniff sniff there. Even finding milk, sausage, and cake didn't distract him. Using his trusty nose, Stamp was able to find the best, most yummiest bakery in the whole city. And from that bakery, he picked out the best, most yummiest smelling loaf of bread. Thinking about how pleased the captain would be, Stamp went trotting back to base, wagging his tail and singing a happy song. But on the road home, he came across a mogul crying all by himself. What's wrong? Stamp asked the forlorn little fellow. I'm so hungry, I haven't eaten in ages, Koopo. The Moogle sniffled. Never fear, Stamp's here, and I know just how to help. So Stamp gave the crying Moogle his loaf of bread. Thank you, Koopo, the Moogle exclaimed, his palm bouncing excitedly. Then Stamp waved goodbye and returned to base. When he got there, Did he went straight to the captain and told him what had happened. The captain was very proud of Stamp. Helping Your that Moogle was the right thing cute. to do. Who's a good boy? The captain laughed as he gave Stamp a good scratch behind the ears. And Stamp let out a happy bark, for he knew that he was the good boy. The end. That's all for today. Did everyone enjoy that? Yeah, when I was playing this DLC for the first time, I, I'm still hoping that at some point, we get to see a fully animated stamp cartoon. But that was pretty close, and I really enjoyed it. <laughs> Man, I seriously don't get how I could have lost. Oh, there it is. Call the turtle. <laughs> we get like a fucking doo-wop version. I love it. This is why Cloud never comes back to his apartment. He hates this song so much. <laughs> I don't care that my door has textures now. Fuck that song. I'm out of here. It's playing it all time. All, all day. Got to play cigar dog. Figured it'd spare my tenants the trouble of chasing off nosy men. Ah, have business with the Merc, do you? If it's a job you want done, he's your man. But otherwise, don't bother. Damn. Yeah, Cloud Cloud would never play uh, Condor Mountain. No, no way. It's time for some dog hey, stealth. Buddy, an actual normal dog. Normal dog. Oh my goodness, it's possible. It can happen. I love the big cartoonies uh, bubbles that come out of his nose when he's sleeping. <laughs> it's good. Mewfie DLC just has a lot of goofy side stuff in it. Yeah, yeah. Like having just all the random goofy cats scattered about doing stupid shit and you got to figure out which one's the real one. It feels like uh, it feels like the goofy Easter eggs you could find in some Metal Gear games or like the, the goofy VR missions in Metal Gear Solid. It reminds me mm -hmm. of that. Just what do you think you're doing, young lady? What do you want with that exactly? Better yet, who are you? Heard some punks have been hassling the nice people at the Happy Turtle, ripping down their flyers. Are you one of them? Mm-mm. So you're trying to sneak a peek at the Merc? Not that I blame you. Boy's easy in the eyes. I'll give him that much. Uh... But cut your losses, honey. Unless you like your men silent and emotionally unavailable. 
Merck's built a wall around himself so damn high, even he can't see over it. He'll never tell you what he's thinking. And that attitude of his... I tried to get through to him, but would he listen? Would he? I'm really not here for... whoever he is. Then what are you here for? For, uh... directions. But I'm all good now, thanks. Yeah, Marl doesn't charge Cloud any money because he's hot, and also because she drilled a peephole into one of the walls. <laughs> Sorry, Merc's not here. Here for advice? Gonna have to wait your turn. Something about today, not sure what. I'm advising my dog now. Hey, dog. You should dress well for a job interview. <laughs> That's my advice to you, Doc. Don't fall asleep on the job like you just did. <laughs> you had one job. <sighs> that was a close one. That fucking song. Chadley. Here we go. Uh, maybe not quite yet. Who's that built little dog? For <laughs> been acting strange since the so before we we talk to Chadley next, the the out. Yes, you and, and before we do some main plot stuff after that as well, want to show off that boomerang she got because yeah, Yuffie, yeah, yeah. Yuffie just has so many mechanics they're hard to show off in one playthrough of the DLC. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She starts off with skill points. I didn't show off the upgrades for the, the shuriken she starts off with, but there's nothing in there. In the first upgrade core, at least, that's, like, super crazy. But uh, the boomerang is her magic-based weapon in the DLC. Mm -hmm. She's got a couple really nice, like, upgrades that are unique to her. Uh, first is, th is thievery, which... This is... This just gives her a new ability. Like, it's like as if you equipped a yellow materia that gives you an ability, but it's just her you weapon that gives it to her. You can mug people? Yeah. The ability is called mug? Uh-huh. Uh, and there's also the AP up ability, so... It doesn't say exactly how much it is, but... It seems like it just makes it so that her weapon gives double AP to anything in it now. Mm-hmm. Um, so best to get that right same, away. Same as her, her, uh... Other bit of equipment. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, because she has the mug ability from that weapon now, she doesn't even need the steel materia. She could just steal whenever. And there it is. Yep. Big yellow boomerang, like my best friend Ty the Tasmanian Tiger. <laughs> yeah! Gotcha. So when you come back here, the big, extremely buff, angry dog is here. Mm -hmm. And Yuffie even has unique lines for when you encounter this guy, because she's just scared of the buff dog. <laughs> A lot of people are scared of giant mutant dogs. It's, <laughs> it's not uncommon. So he's weak to, weak to ice, so we, we switch her Ninjutsu to that element. Now, it's still, like, beneficial to have the actual, like, elemental materia on her, because they just do a lot more damage than her own Ninjutsu can. Right, but here's her right. new ability. That was brumal form. It is... <laughs> she leaves that little ghostly apparition of a, a Moogle behind. When you use that move, she briefly goes into a state where she gets hit by an attack, she just dodges it completely for f and takes no damage, and it fills up her ATV gauge if you do it right. Amazing. Yeah. I, I, I love that she does like the ninja decoy thing as one of her abilities. Uh, the yep. Art of War move, uh, her damage dealing move, uh, has some extra mechanics to it. If you use it multiple times in a row, it gets stronger and stronger. And to grow on. Uh, so like, and it seems to be that you have to use it in like quick succession. So yeah, the first time yeah. you use it, it hits a couple of times. The second time, if you use it short, like very shortly after, it's, a, it's an upgraded version of it that hits like twice as much. You hear it more in later episodes, but uh, every time she uses that Art of War move, she's got some phrase to go along with it. And if you use yeah, the, yeah. if you use it a second time shortly after, she continues that phrase again. Uh, <laughs> one of the things she says if you use it twice in a row is, uh, 
Uh, I believe it's move like a chocobo, stab like a tonberry. <laughs> yeah. Piece of cake. Yeah, the Brumal Form ability is a really fun one to use. The timing window on it is not as tiny as you would think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Even if you dodge and, like, there's an attack happening somewhere near you, but it's not going to make direct contact with you, if you're close enough to it, it, like, still counts as working. Yeah, yeah. So... It's also, like, the best ability to put on one of those shortcuts, so you can just use it like it's a dodge Ooh, button. Chill. Yeah. That's to be you! And a thing that can you can easily miss, but and when Brumal Form, like, again. activates and it works correctly, instead of seeing damage numbers pop up or Yuffie, Get you just see the word the poof. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. That's very cute. Uh, so the mug ability is it's you steal from enemies, but also you hurt them while stealing from them. That sounds like a mugging to me. Yep. Yeah. Hope you learned your lesson. And if you have enemies grouped together and you hit multiple enemies with mug, you steal from all of them. Well, you try to. Or try to, at least. Make way for the amazing Yuffie! So yeah, it's not only just that Yuffie has enough depth that you can... Oh, also, when she's in uh, ninjutsu mode, her deadly dodge is different. She sends out this uh -huh. little, like... Oh, yeah. Yeah, just orbits around her for a while. It's pretty cool. And that little, like, ground explosion well, is if you yeah, hold down the, the attack button while in ninjutsu mode. She sends that shockwave out, which, uh... <laughs> if enemies get hit by the shockwave, they'll get pulled towards you a little bit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it's not just that there's more depth to her than there is DLC to play, it's also that there are completely brand new combat mechanics coming in uh, next episode that take a long time to explain, so... <laughs> Searching for candidates. Candidate detected. Performing physical analysis. She seems relatively agile and has substantial muscle mass for her stature. Hmm. An acceptable candidate. Hey, uh, you want to tell me what you're mumbling about? My apologies. My name is Chadley. Would you be interested in helping me with my research? I'm Yuffie. Nice to meet you. So, what are you researching? Combat. It would entail doing battle with a summon in a virtual arena using this portable simulator. Interested? Hmm. Sure. Why not? I'm a kick its butt. Very well, then. I am is this, how, <laughs> is this how the punches are thrown? I am learning human body language as we speak. <laughs> so there's a new summon and summon boss fight. It's Rama, the guy I, I brought up before. This was the single summon that he, they just had to cut from the main game. He's mm -hmm, the lightning mm -hmm. summon that I've desperately wanted. We're not going to fight him when just as Yuffie, Yuffie though. Prepared, please let me know. Because uh, Rama is a really done. fucking hard fight. Oh, no. We got a we've, next episode. We've only leveled up the one time. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta wait until we got some extra combat mechanics with us before we go fight Rama. Yes, combat mechanics. People who fix cars and then hit you with wrenches. Ah, oh, yeah. Dom Toretto is a combat mechanic. That's basically already a Final Fantasy job, engineer. <laughs> That's what they do.